Hello, I'm Robin Gunning with another excerpt from Longfellow's epic poem, The Song of Hiawatha. I'm going to skip a few chapters where Longfellow describes Chibiabos, the musician, and Quazin, the strongman, legends in their own right in Native American lore. How Hiawatha provided corn, staple of the Indian diet for his people, and how he avenged the death of his great-grandfather, who was killed by an evil sorcerer when he came down from the moon to rescue Hiawatha's grandmother, Nokomis, who, as you will remember, fell from the moon. But hopefully you'll want to read the whole poem for yourselves. The chapter I'd like to finish with is a part of the poem that's not supported by legend but a beautiful creation by Longfellow, the story of Hiawatha's wooing of the beautiful Minnehaha, Laughing Water, named after a waterfall. As unto the bow the cord is, so unto the man is woman. Though she bends him, she obeys him. Though she draws him, yet she follows, useless each without the other. Thus the youthful Hiawatha said within himself and pondered, much perplexed by various feelings, listless, longing, hoping, fearing, dreaming still of many ha-ha, of the loving, lovely, laughing water in the land of the Dakotas. What a maiden of your people, warning, said the old Nokomis, Go not eastward, go not westward, for a stranger whom we know not. Like a fire upon the hearthstone is a neighbor's homely daughter. Like the starlight or the moonlight is the handsomest of strangers. Thus dissuading spake Nokomis, and my Hiawatha answered only this, Dear old Nokomis, very pleasant is the firelight, but I like the starlight better. Better do I like the moonlight. Gravely then said old Nokomis, Bring not here an idle maiden, Bring not here a useless woman, Hands unskillful, feet unwilling. Bring a wife with nimble fingers, Heart and hand that move together, Feet that run on willing errands. Smiling answered Hiawatha, In the land of the Dakotas Lives the arrow maker's daughter. Many ha ha laughing water, handsomest of all the women. I will bring her to your wigwam. She shall run upon your errands, be your starlight, moonlight, firelight, be the sunlight of my people. Still dissuading, said old Nokomis, bring not to my lodge a stranger from the land of the Dakotas. Very fierce are the Dakotas. Often is there war between us. There are feuds yet unforgotten, wounds that ache and still may open. Laughing answered Hiawatha, For that reason, if no other, would I wed the fair Dakota, that our tribes might be united, that old feuds might be forgotten, and old wounds be healed forever. Thus departed Hiawatha to the land of the Dakotas, to the land of handsome women, striding over moor and meadow, through interminable forests, through uninterrupted silence. With his moccasins of magic at each stride a mile he measured, yet the way seemed long before him, and his heart outran his footsteps. And he journeyed without resting till he heard the cataract's laughter, heard the falls of Minnehaha calling to him through the silence. Pleasant is the sound, he murmured, Pleasant is the voice that calls me. On the outskirts of the forest, twixt the shadow and the sunshine, herds of fallow deer were feeding, but they saw not Hiawatha. To his bow he whispered, Fail not. To his era whispered, Swerve not. Sent it singing on its errand to the red heart of the roebuck. Threw the deer across his shoulder and sped forward without pausing. At the doorway of his wigwam sat the ancient arrow maker in the land of the Dakotas, making arrowheads of jasper, arrowheads of chalcedony, 
At his side in all her beauty sat the lovely Minnehaha, sat his daughter laughing water. Plating mats of flags and rushes, of the past the old man's thoughts were, and the maiden's of the future. He was thinking as he sat there of the days when with such arrows he had struck the deer and bison on the muscaday the meadow, shot the wild goose flying southward, on the wing the clamorous wawa, thinking of the great war parties, how they came to buy his arrows, could not fight without his arrows. Ah, no more such noble warriors could be found on earth as they were. Now the men were all like women, only used their tongues for weapons. She was thinking of a hunter from another tribe and country, young and tall and very handsome, who one morning in the springtime came to buy her father's arrows, sat and rested in the wigwam, lingered long about the doorway, looking back as he departed. She had heard her father praise him, praise his courage and his wisdom. Would he come again for arrows to the falls of Minnehaha? On the mat her hands lay idle, and her eyes were very dreamy. Through their thoughts they heard a footstep, heard a rustling in the branches, and with glowing cheek and forehead, with the deer upon his shoulders, suddenly from out the woodlands, Hiawatha stood before them. To be continued. <laughs>